you know, welcome to this special edition of The Hot Dish. I'm Joel Heikamp. And I'm Heidi Heikamp. Today, we're going to talk about last night's presidential debate. Uh, with us today to join us in this conversation is former congressman, senator, ambassador. In other words, he's a little bit of everything. Joe Donnelly, thanks for being with us today, ambassador. How you been? Thank you. Good. How about you? He can't keep a job. That's exactly right. That's what I tell people. <laughs> or, it's wonderful to be back home. Or he's so good at it, they keep promoting him. How's that? <laughs> Joel, he's not going to give you a job or pay you any money, so you don't need that. You know, to be honest with you, working at the Vatican, I never really thought I had a shot. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, on my last, on my next to last day, I asked the number two at the Vatican. I said, I've been here two and a half years. Like when my final time comes, is this going to count to help me move along into the upper regions? And he looked at me very seriously and goes, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that was a waste of two and a half years. <laughs> Well, Heidi, I know you got some things to say about the debate last night. Well, I mean, I think the Republicans are shocked. They're shocked because guess who showed up last night? Donald Trump. I mean, <laughs> people are like, oh, could you, you know, people who are analyzing how I behave, that's exactly who he is. I mean, they're mad because their guy showed up and he was who he was. And he did not look happy to be there. And I, you know me, Joel, I always think that um, you turn off the sound and watch the expressions and Joyful always wins over crabby. And that guy was one crabby guy last night. And then he said really absurd things like, you know, people eating cats and dogs. And he um, went off on a tirade about crowd sizes. And he took every every bit of chum she threw in the water, he gobbled up. And, you know, I think I think it's just who he is, because, you know, in debate prep, they just told him, don't do it. Don't do it. Ambassador, I'm going to take you up on your offer to call you Joe. Okay, we've all known each other. Yeah, I'd, I'd love yeah. that. So, yeah. Joe, when you watched, what did you think? I thought that the rest of the country could finally see the Donald Trump that Heidi and I have known for years. Just what Heidi was saying. That this is the guy we dealt with in meetings. This is the guy we dealt with um, on a regular basis in the legislature. and so. What was so uh, in incredible was the plan Kamala had to bring it out. Um, and tr truly what you just said, like if she was going fishing, she filled up the boat. Um, it, was an, um, it, it was a reflection. That's who Donald Trump is. And like the things he said actually did not surprise me because we've seen them before. She definitely caught her limit. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would argue that if the game warden stopped by, she was over limit. I bet they, that's a whole other issue. I, you know, uh, both you guys know I refereed college and high school football for a lot of years. And in, in high school football in North Dakota, we have a thing called the mercy rule. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Where if a team gets ahead by 35 points in the second half, that's it. We're done playing ball. And I kept thinking, you know, uh, Vice President Harris, that's enough. I mean, quit, quit pile it on. You know, they're going to start feeling sorry for the guy. But it, it was that bad, Joel. I mean, it really was that bad. And what was amazing, too, was, you know, we've been watching this, this performance for nine years now. And so the first thing he does, he, he knows he didn't do very well, I think. And he runs out into the spin room. And starts talking about all these polls he has that shows he had 90% was for him and 10% for Harris. And and it's like, you know, it never ends. It reminds me of the early days of our country, the folks who were the, the guy who was uh, selling the fake medicine all across the West. Um, it was always the same kind of thing. Whatever you hear is different the next hour or the next day. And And when they talked about, you know, Vice President Harris saying that her position had changed a little bit on this one issue. I thought about how his positions have changed on every issue. He talks about love for the police. And then in the debate, he talks about the January 6th insurrectionists, that he was a part of getting this whole thing going. And we saw policemen who died the next few days because of the attacks. And it's like, who are you? Are you the guy who says he loves police? 
or the guy who helps incite an attack against the police. And so this is this is just who he is. It's chaos. Heidi, you've been all over national media. I mean, they've been calling on you for for your opinion big time. What are you hearing from some of the some of the people you're on with? You know, I, I they basically have pivoted because we were all really honest when Joe Biden turned in a bad performance. At least right. I was. I mean, you know, we just kind of said this is bad and we need to rethink this. Their reaction is, yeah, it was bad, but who cares? It's not going to change numbers. It's not going to, um, uh, you know, have any impact. And so they immediately, the smart ones that I've been on, Republicans, immediately pivoted to the so what, because they didn't want to defend what got said. They didn't want to defend the performance. They knew that he had lost. And then then immediately it's the so what? And and that's a legitimate question. And and I, I you know, I would be interested, Joel, you were on the radio this morning. What was what was the people's response? You know, well, just people we, calling you. We played a lot of sound cuts and that wasn't hard to do because he gave us a lot of sound cuts and he gave uh she, you know, Kamala gave us a lot of sound cuts as well. But I mean, here was their reaction. I had some people call in that were going to vote for Donald Trump that said, we're not. I had some people that called in that said, I really had doubts of whether or not she's up to this. I'm not doubting that anymore. I had people call in and say, look, this was three on one. ABC piled on, that it shouldn't have been that way. Then I was ready with the sound of, hey, you lied. They're not eating dogs in Springfield, Ohio. You know, they're not. Uh, and it was AB's job, ABC's job to call bullshit on that. And so, you know, the, the, it it went that way. You know, I was broadcasting from a, a farm show and I ended up with people outside my studio window just taking it in. I mean, Joe, these people are starting to get it. I'm not saying it's going to move the numbers. I'm just saying they know what's going on. Yeah, I, I was just going to follow up to what you were saying, Joel, by saying people know who he is now. They know. Um, they've seen this act for so long and there's been so many excuses for it, but they know. They know who he is, what he stands for, and are are just besides themselves that this is the Republicans' choice for president. Well, I, a question for you, Heidi. You know, last time you mentioned Joe Biden and I I called for Biden to get out of the race after the last performance. I, I called for both of them. I said 80-year-old men shouldn't be running this country and and uh, had about 20 calls into the show from 80-year-old men who agreed with him. You know, but, you know, I we were honest about Joe Biden. I mean, we were. But the way he acted last night, you know, you guys know him, but. I think it was at a whole different level. I, I think that he looked old. He sounded older. Uh, he sounded confused. I mean, I'm not saying that he was as bad as Biden was, but he sure wasn't too far behind, Heidi. Yeah, it was interesting because she's never met him. And Joe and I have spent a lot of time when we were in the Senate. We spent a lot of time with him. And he was usually on kind of a charm offensive until he knew he couldn't move us. And then he was done with us. You, you're dismissed to get out. Then he know. threw us in the wood chipper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he knew how to be charming. He knew how to can sit across the desk and make small talk. And, you know, and, and I just think, just like I think Biden came on the stage, didn't feel well, was not, you know, I mean, was cloudy and fuzzy about what he thought. Donald Trump came to that stage last night angry. He was told there's going to be a split screen. Do not overreact to what she says. So the beginning, he was pretty contained until she kept turning the knife and he took the bait. And the more that happened, the more he kind of lost um, uh, the the attention and and it and and the ability to present a presidential kind of um, visual. But I want to I want to defend ABC and, and for full disclosure, I have a contract with ABC. I know these folks really well. They're really good journalists. They are not biased, but I think that they made a decision that that, that things were going to get said that were not correct. 
they let a lot of stuff go by. <laughs> Let's just point that out. And then only hit the most egregious kinds of uh, misstatements. But my point is every fact checker out there, including the ones for Fox, have fact checked the um, former president and said, you know, there just isn't even a comparison between the fibbing uh, and the prevarication. That's a nice way of saying lying between Trump and, and Harris. I mean, Harris may have been vague, but she was purposeful in her vagueness and then uh, and uh, didn't get herself in trouble on fact checking. I actually thought during the debate, you know, it showed that he talked for about five minutes more than uh, than the vice president did. And I thought that ABC actually gave him like uh, uh, opportunities that were not supposed to be part of it, where he just he just kind of broke in and said, I got to talk about this. And and they let him. And so I thought it was done in an extraordinarily fair way by ABC. I thought actually they um, were very serious, very focused. They did a good job. But to your point, Joel, the thought that kept striking me watching that last night was, boy, he looks old and tired and yesterday. It was like someone who has a record player with a 45 and they it just keeps playing the song over and over and over and everybody's looking going i i i'm 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 done with this now i i can't do this anymore yeah i he's always shot about a um 105 when he says he golfs around an 80 something and i'd be willing to bet now he's golfing about a 120 i mean he's looking <laughs> old but guys i I've been making this argument to to Heidi, and I'm really curious what you think about it, Joe, that he gauges everything by crowd size because yep. of The Apprentice, because of ratings. And he didn't like getting fired. And when she told him he got fired last night, it hit him. He knows what Barack Obama did to him at that convention, and he knows the jokes that followed it. And so when she brought that up, his crowd, the fact that the crowds leave, they get bored. I don't think you could have planned for or done anything, Joe, that would hurt him more than what that did. That, that's his whole ego wrapped up in one in one bow is uh, I'm always the best. I'm always the biggest. I'm always the loudest. I'm always the most uh, the most visible. And she in such a smart way said, you know, you're so boring. People just walked out. It's like, that's the, that's as bad as it gets <laughs> that, that you were putting people to sleep. Um, well, and then I, I did laugh one time, Heidi, I actually didn't laugh. My wife laughed when he said, they told me if I got 73 million, I won. <laughs> and Jill looked at me and she said, they told you if you got 1.1 million, you were going to win. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you know, we uh, Claire and you and I all got our vote to reelect number. We hit our That's numbers right. and exceeded our we numbers. We all hit our but numbers. But guess what? We didn't win and we're not telling people that we did. I mean, right. the, 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 the important thing, I think, for her is she now needs to capitalize on this. She needs to do some more interviews. She needs to be um, and not have Tim Walls with her. I love Tim, but, you know, she needs to now... Uh, occupy the the media space. And, you know, she she will not win this by playing defense. And she played offense oh, this, really well last night. She's gonna keep that up. This is a this is a hard battle to the end. That's gonna be very close. And I think you, you know what I've always thought about um, the swing states and how important they are, but Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania have always been in a different section for me in that if if you win those you win um and if we can get some of the others that is extraordinarily phenomenal but if you don't get the core you're probably not going to wind up winning and i think in wisconsin and michigan we've gotten to be in in a little bit better shape and i think this may be coming down to pennsylvania and that's why they were talking about 8000 800000 People of Polish descent in Pennsylvania last night. That's why they were talking fracking so much and why there was such a such a tussle back and forth is because they know how that goes is probably going to determine who's in the office. 
I, I'm curious what you both, as people who served with her and who know her much better than than what our listening audience does. And so I'm curious about this. Uh, everybody thought last night that they were afraid she would be intimidated by Donald Trump. Clearly she wasn't. Oh, Clay. <laughs> that was my last thought. That never have been my mind. anything. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about you, you folks that know her, but I'm talking about the general public. I think that yeah. the general public going into that debate thought she's got to be tough enough to take him on. And, and and I think he tried to intimidate her too, and it didn't work. And and I think it started. It all started with the the kind of you know what when he she walked over and introduced herself and actually said her name the way you pronounce it. <laughs> you know, I I think he was on his heels right away. You guys, well, I do. You, can can I make this point? I've I've known Kamala longer than Joe has because she was an attorney general and. California. And and so I knew her back when she was a state official. She literally has been in courtrooms with cartel. She's been in courtrooms with people, with mobsters and organized crime. And she's been with some of the worst, you know, kind of characters who will look at you, try and intimidate you, try and get you to back off as a prosecutor. She's not going to be afraid of, of an 80 year old guy. She was never going to be intimidated by Donald Trump. Okay. Then let me ask you this, Joe, because I agree with both of you. We learned that last night. But the poll numbers did not move even when Joe Biden had a very, very bad performance. You didn't see the poll numbers move that much in, in the Biden heads up against head to head with Trump. And so, you know, we didn't see that convention bounce the way people thought how great the Democratic convention was. Uh, will this matter, Joe? Yeah, you know, I think the reset came before the convention. And so it's close, a couple of points either way. Joel, I think it stays that way. And I think that's why the knocking on the doors, the phone calls, the organization, the data analytics, all of that is so absolutely critical because it could come down to one county. Um, and that's why he is sowing the seeds, has been sowing the seeds for four years now. Um, trying to gain an edge when this when this starts, um, you, you're going to see um, almost unlimited efforts to try and denigrate the vote, discredit the vote, all of those things. I think we're in for a rough ride. I got another question for both of you. I'm going to put you in a position where you now are Kamala Harris's campaign manager. You said Heidi earlier, don't do everything with Tim Walls. Get out there, speak to the public. If you could tell her, Heidi, one thing, just one thing to win this race, what would it be? I think that it would be stay focused on the issues that swing voters. By that, I mean suburban women and women who care about choice. Stay on those, but but also understand that they care about economic issues. Hone her economic arguments much more um, carefully. And I, I would say just just continue to do what you're doing in terms of looking like you're having fun and looking youthful. And and so, but but you can't do that by, you know, doing set events. I mean, call the talk radio in in um in Pennsylvania. Call talk radio to let let, let people let people ask you a question about fracking. How did you change your mind? What caused you to change your mind? She proved last night that she can take all incoming. And so just go do it. And and I think that the the media hype about oh she does she's all programmed and doesn't want to take all this she could dispel that in in a week by doing a lot of unscheduled unplanned kinds of media events. But I I, I tell you I you know here at One Country we believe the rural vote matters. That's why we do the work that we do. We think that the Democratic Party needs to do better in rural America. She could be out there, not just relying on Tim Walls, but out there speaking to rural voters. Especially Joe, if you had and, her and, ear. Yeah. Can I just make this point? Well, that Joe. was more than one thing, Heidi. I just want to point okay. out. I found the moderator of the debate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanna I wanna ask Joe because Joe had a demographic that um was a little different than ours with a lot of small manufacturers, supply chain manufacturers, you know, um, uh, you know, even though agriculture is huge in Indiana. Rural, rural America includes a lot of union workers 
in Indiana. Joel, how does she get the union workers um, that you were so successful with, how does she get them to take a second look? By showing up at all of their events, you know, in, in, in the swing states and talking to them about how pro-union she and the president have been, that they work to protect the pensions, that they work to make sure that um, with, with the legislation that was passed, there's an incredible amount of work for everybody. Heidi, all the union workers are working right now. The pensions are protected. The salaries are tremendous. They're in probably the best shape they've been in, in their lives. And so they just, look, if there's a steel workers meeting in, um, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Tim Walls ought to be there. If there's a, an iron workers meeting in, um, Pittsburgh, Kamala needs to be there. Um, I'll never, ever forget one of the greatest lessons was that, um, secretary Clinton was never in Wisconsin and, and lost by 10,000 votes that year. And I thought, you know, you really have to stick to your knitting. And if you have a spare moment, great. But until you do, you've got to be where you're meeting the voters who are going to make the decision. And those union workers, she can be at Farm Progress shows, just like you talked about, walking around answering questions from people. Um, and she can answer any question from anybody. And so um, what I think is just what you were saying, Joel, she needs to talk about jobs, education. She needs to talk about women's issues. She's going to have to talk about the border and talk about how Trump killed the bill and that border, border crossings are at their lowest now than they've been in an incredibly uh, long amount of time. That they care about the border. That, you know, what I always used to say is I said, look, I, I am a compassionate person but there are laws in place from the United States and the laws are to be obeyed. That's not complicated. So, uh, you know, I'm at that farm show you two today and there was a gentleman and I'm guessing he's over 70, like a typical farmer now in one country country, you know, he's also that, probably rich at this point too. Well, <laughs> he's not, he's not doing bad, but he's walking <laughs> around with a, a Harris Walls t-shirt. Wow. And, and guys, they wouldn't have done that. A couple of years ago, you you just didn't do that. Yeah, and you they just would didn't have been, do that. Even if they supported the Democratic ticket, they were not telling their neighbors they did. Exactly. And and, and exactly. this is the one thing that people and we've been talking a lot about that uh, this on the podcast because a lot of our listeners they aren't they aren't driving the the county roads, Joel. They and yeah. Joe they aren't they aren't out there looking, and they they don't have the comparison, right? So I knew Hillary was in trouble. When right. I saw what was happening in Western Minnesota and Western um, and and Western Pennsylvania, I knew she was in trouble. Places where you would never have seen a Republican sign were flying the flags. Then in in twenty, same kind of like. In fact, we had pop up merch stores in small rural communities selling Trump merch. Joel, have you seen one of those? Have you seen no. a lot of no? I mean, and I'm sure you aren't seeing it in in rural Indiana no. the same way. Yeah, and you're not seeing the signs over in Lake Country. You know, we've got an area, Joe, over here that's kind of the high end. You know, they they all go from North Dakota to Minnesota and have pretty high end lake homes. Yeah, there's there's no signs. I took my Harley and rode it over there, just poked around to see nothing. I've got a really weird question for both of you two, though. By the way, but, just just I think they want some peace and they want some yeah, stability. Yep, they're and they worn want out. Some sanity. They're yep. worn out. They're worn out. I'm curious what you two think, because my producer is 27 years old. She is of a whole different generation than I am. She was so excited about Taylor Swift supporting the, the uh, Kamala Harris. And she she pulled up the data for me, how many shares, what's happening. I'm, I'm going to throw it to you first, Joe. I mean, how big of a deal is that endorsement? I think it's a monstrous deal. I know um, my niece. She, my niece, when she got tickets to the concert, broke down in tears. And I was think all I was thinking was, oh, I'm probably going to have to drive her. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was rooting against the tickets for that reason. <laughs> but I mean, this is a big part of who they are. And, and, and this is someone who they relate to, 
who they look up to. And it's a big deal. Heidi. Uh, I, you know, I was with a young woman last night. Where I did ABC radio and she works there and she came running at me to let me know that because she had gotten the tweet first that Taylor or the Instagram first that Taylor Swift had endorsed or had said she's going to vote for Kamala Harris and encouraged her people to register. And she started telling me, I mean, she said she was African, young African-American woman. She said, I am a Swifty. I, I, this is, I can't tell you how big this is, how big this is. And, and the thing is, you know, that enthusiasm, if the, if she gets a registered and then from that registration, you get people voting, that's probably a 70 to 75% voting block for, for um, Kamala. And if, if they show up in those swing States, they they assume she's got, I, I, the, the young woman told me it's like something like, multi-million dollar followers or uh, uh, million followers like, millions and millions yeah, like, and millions like almost 40 million i mean it was like yeah. a huge number and you think if you just motivate 10 percent of them in those swing states to show up and vote and they vote the way young people are voting now just take the demographics and understand it this is this could swing the election and, and i think she has to continue to stay on this this can't be just a one tweet deal. But I think what you'll see is just what you're talking about, Heidi. The biggest difference, I think, might be people who probably weren't going to vote, but now will. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And that's that's what Abby said. That's what my producer said. She goes, there was a lot of people, she said, especially when it was Biden against Trump, that just simply weren't going to vote. They, they, they weren't excited. They, they felt left out. And she said, now there are going to be a lot of people that register to vote and vote. You got that look, Hyde. They can't yeah, well, see it on the radio. I, I, but- I just have to laugh because um, Trump's reaction was, well, I have Mrs. Mahomes. Number one, <laughs> they probably didn't even know her first name. Brittany, okay. and, and, you know, I'm like, hon, I mean, you might not he's have got, her husband either. He's got Tommy Dorsey and the big jazz band. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys, I've got one for you. So at this farm show, uh, uh, Lee Greenwood is performing. And I came home from the Democratic Convention. I said, well, if you want to see the difference between the two, uh, we had Pink, we had the Chicks, and they had Lee Greenwood. And so my my FM crew at the radio station, Joe, got a poster sign from Lee Greenwood, and they put it on my desk with a note that said, we know you're a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me it said something else on there from where you <laughs> yeah, no, no. I know. I know we're running out of time. I just have to ask you this, and you're not going to like it. Uh, who wins this thing, Heidi? If you if you ran it today, who wins? Um, if you run it today, I think she wins. But I am. But this is going to be razor thin. And my big concern, and you know, been doing a lot of work on election security, trying to prepare for what could happen if Trump decides he's going to stir the pot again. You know, think of 15, 1,600 people in jail because he told them the big lie that he had had won and that it was their job as patriots to defend him. He admits it was not sarcastic. He admits he lost. He will not. And now now that he's been called out on that, he will not go quietly into the night. And so I think she wins. But I think we have to be prepared to protect democracy against another um, attempt to steal an election. Joe, I think it comes down to Pennsylvania. If it was today, I think she wins by maybe a point or two. Um, but what Heidi was saying, if somebody tells you who they are, believe them. Um, yeah. and he intends, he, he would rather shut down the government, have the capital go up, um, than give this up. Yeah. And so, well, because it, remember, he's also facing criminal charges. I, I was saying and the so, stakes are even higher, the, Joe. The stakes are even higher. And this is not going to be an easy road we have ahead. But we all have to stay strong. Yeah. And, and and I will tell you this from my perspective as a radio talk show host. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I want her to win. I'm going to vote for Kamala. But uh, as a talk show host, uh, losing uh, Donald Trump in the public eye, my ratings are going down, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
And, you know, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Joe. We appreciate thank your you. thoughts. And, and we're going to do this more with you, whether you like it or not. We got your cell phone. And I want to thank all of those listeners out there for their support and their interest. Get out and vote. Uh, get, you talk to your friends, right. knock on doors, make phone calls. This is going to be a little bit of everything. And, you know, I want you to learn about what we're doing at One Country by going to onecountryproject.com. Thank you, too. I got to MC this one, Heidi. Next time you, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, thanks for listening on One Country. Topic up.